Matt, how do you go camping? What do you take? I get a ton of questions when we go to shows about this. So I have an off-road and overlanding trailer that I built almost seven years ago. So I figured it was time to introduce it to the channel. I'm gonna show you guys my complete off-road and overlanding trailer, break it down for you, the costs, the pros and cons of it. Let's jump into this one. I've been watching YouTube as long as I've been in the Jeep community, so it's been a very long time. As of lately, the time frame of YouTubers that are buying these just ungodly expensive overlanding trailers that are 30, 40, $50,000 and saying, you know, hey, you need this to go out and have a good time. And I'm watching this going, oh my goodness. You know, when I first picked up this trailer, I was a broke college kid and I wanted an off-road trailer. I wanted to do all these cool things to it. So what I ended up doing was just doing a lot of internet research. I, I saw that these trailers were out there, but I actually picked this one up probably about an hour away. It was an older gentleman that owned the trailer. He bought it from the local National Guard unit, I don't know, 10 years out of service. He had the original title for it, and all he used to do with it was tow mulch and haul things around his yard with it. And I think I paid two or 300 bucks for it. I couldn't believe the deal I just got. Drove it all the way home, and then dad and I just started working on it that summer that I actually built this thing. I think one of the biggest things I will let you guys know when it comes to the pricing and the budgets of these, I don't have a terrible amount of money into it. I I like to go with that KISS method to keep it simple, stupid, and just make sure that this thing is reliable. It can take me all over the place, but still be comfortable. Here's one of the first things that I'm gonna talk about. This is the Smitty Built XL Overlander 10. Now this one is the XL size, so the platform when it's closed, closes up to a six foot by four foot base. And then when you have it opened up, it opens to eight foot by six foot sleeping area, which is longer than a regular king size mattress. And honestly fits me, my wife, and the dogs up there extremely comfortably. And this is probably the first one that that I would say, maybe you don't need to listen to all these guys that say, hey, you need a $7,000 rooftop tent on here. When I bought this five years ago, it was like $1,000. And I gotta tell you, I have not had any issues with it at all. When I tell you I've taken this to shows for the past five years, this ladder has been absolutely abused. I will tell you, no one else is gonna get the amount of abuse on a ladder like I did of people climbing up, looking in, climbing down. I guarantee you a thousand people have climbed up this ladder and it is still holding strong. And that was the first big time addition and what really makes it an overlanding and camping trailer. The second thing that I decided to add on to this when I was building it was the ARB 2500 series awning. This was once again a bigger purchase for me when I did that back in the day. I think it was also like 250 or $300. I gotta say this thing has been on here as long as the Smitty Belt 10 and it is also holding up extremely well. I only had one instance where I didn't stake down these landing legs and it kind of flipped over on itself. That was at the Bantam Jeep show. It didn't hurt it too bad. I absolutely love having an awning on here and I think ARB since the time I I bought this has already increased and included one that actually has a light in the center. So maybe I'll have to upgrade to that. But obviously like when I'm out here with the pups, Onyx, they love crawling under this thing. I do too. It's a great way to get either out of the rain or out of that sun. It is hot today. And this is a definite must have on my overland trailer. And I will tell you guys, these trailers are extremely tough. Now this one here, literally I got it home, pulled the tub off with probably eight or 10 bolts, blasted it down pretty well, scraped off. There was like three or four coats of paint on it and just painted it a nice gloss black. Now also on this, since it is is a CJ5 bolt pattern. The five on five and a half lug pattern has a lot of aftermarket cool wheels. So I got a set of fuel wheels on here that I picked up that were scratch and dent and decided to install them on here just because I thought it looked a little bit better than those military wheels. Plus the military wheels are extremely narrow so they wouldn't accept a larger tire. I put on here a 31 by 10 and a half Goodyear Wrangler. I don't think the treads on this tire are ever gonna go bad just because there's barely any weight on this vehicle at all. And if you guys are also noticing the fender difference in between, I did decide also to do an axle flip. So basically we put the leaf spring mounts from below to up above. Once again, not that hard. It's as easy as unbolting it, rotating the axle and bolting the thing back on. So we did kind of gloss over this. The only thing that you would really need major tools for was the rack that I decided to put on here. I have modified this a few times. It was originally up a lot taller because the trailer was lower. Once I flipped the axle, it made everything really, really high up there. If you got a good friend with a welder and a chop saw, you can do this pretty quickly. That was the only thing I would say would take major tools. And then we just made little L brackets all also for the awning. That way that could go up higher, but still not be at the same height as the rack. So we could kind of keep everything exactly where I wanted it to be. And even at this point, there's a company called Denute Trailers and they actually have bolts on mounts that pinch around here on the side and they have a rack system for it. So if you don't even want to use a welder at all, you can pinch on 
onto the sidewalls here and you have a whole rack set up for you. I will tell you when I was also building this, I got extremely disheartened to see the cost of a lot of these battery management systems that were on a lot of these trailers. So I just decided to kind of do things the way I saw fit. Now inside here, this is a tongue box I did add onto the beginning. This was kind of probably two years into it I added this. I have an interstate deep cycle battery powered by a NOCO Genius Tender here. Now this is a G3500. What's cool about this is it'll maintain the battery. So the nice thing is that when you're at a campground or you're at a place where you can charge, you can top this off and this smart tender here will completely check, go all the way up to 100% and also just check the mode and go right to it to make sure the battery stays safe and charged. I added a small inverter tucked here in the beginning so you can see I do have two 110 outlets as well as two USBs. That's just a switch right there. That's on Amazon for like 30 bucks. I keep some other things in here like the hub socket. So that's for the hubs if I need to pull those off. And then the coolest thing I have is the trigger system right here. Now this is a wireless switch system. I can reach in there and press the buttons. It's completely fused. But then also on my phone, I have an app and I can use Bluetooth to power everything. But this is a very simple battery box here. I would say all of this together, I might have four or 500 bucks into it. And it does everything I need it to. One of the things I added prior to COVID starting was an onboard water tank. One day while walking around tractor supply, I actually noticed one of these ATV sprayers. Now this is a 15 gallon unit that you fill in from the top. And what it's used for is to go on an ATV or an all-terrain vehicle and drive around property and potentially fill it with weed killer, fill it with water to water plants. Also noticed it was $60. It had a built-in pump. It was low voltage because it was built for an ATV and it came with a line and a pressure activated switch. So I thought to myself, you know what? This is just a simple barb on the end. I can add a three quarter for a regular hose, plumb it up to this. So I'll press my number one button. That's gonna prime the water. And then the coolest thing is, is that as soon as I open this, I can spray myself in the face with it, but it's pressure activated. So when you open it, the pump starts and then when you close it, it does shut off. I actually have it mounted up into here permanently and I can fill up 15 gallons worth of water into here to use for showers, to use for cleaning up at camp. So another thing, if you're at a campsite and you need hot water, I decided to add one of these in. I keep it in a blue tote, so I know this is my hot water kit. This is an echo temp unit that basically I just hang up. It has a nice shower handle on there as well. All this needs for it is that onboard water and a propane line hookup, which I carry two five pound tanks with me when I go and they last absolutely forever. So this is really cool. I added this one during COVID because a lot of the state parks, they were open for camping, but none of the facilities were open. So you couldn't go in and take a shower. You couldn't do anything inside there. And I was like, I want hot water. I want to rinse off. I'm sweating all day and I get a lot of weird looks when I'm standing out there kind of in my swim trunks giving myself a shower with my uh, onboard heater. Now I can leave links down below for all the parts that I have onto this but what I'm going to tell you is that to budget out a trailer like this I would say I have about four or five thousand dollars into this complete trailer. That includes the cost of the trailer, all the tires, the wheels, the jacks, everything that you see here. I would say budget yourself at about the four to five thousand dollar point. Now the biggest variable is the trailer. How finished do you want it? How nice do you need to start the base with or are you pretty handy and you can rip this thing really down to bare steel, reinforce the frame and include a couple other things. For me personally, it was a different market seven years ago for the value of these. They have gone up a little bit. So maybe the cost of the trailer might be a little bit higher than I paid, but still to find yourself a good one, I've been able to find them on Craigslist and local marketplace in the 800 to $1,200 price point. I will tell you, I have a lot of fun in this trailer and I can't wait to show you guys everything that can be done with this and see how my Jeep does towing that. I think a lot of people need to know that you can actually go out there and afford to camp. You can go out there and afford to overland without needing to spend 30, 40, $50,000 on a trailer. You can do one of these projects like this. Fall and winter is coming up. So that's a good chance for you to spend some garage time with your family, get one of these built and then make some cool memories with them. Now, until next time, I am Matt from Dirt Road Cred. Get out there and earn yours.